Good morning, good afternoon, good evening across the country, around the world. Welcome back to the Kerbal Space Program. We're here back at Duna with the Duna Rover. And we're going to deorbit and land near the Duna base. I've actually messed up a few times and gotten close. Um, so I know this node is actually going to get me, like, if I, if I do what I did last time, it's going to get me really close, like within a few kilometers of the Duna base. Um, yeah. Note to self, quick save as soon as you touch down, so I don't make any other stupid mistakes. Anyway, we've got... Oh, crap. Um, abort, 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 because it doesn't know which way is forward. Control here. There we go. Execute that. <laughs> Otherwise, it would go in line with the, uh, with the command pocket there. With the inline cockpit there. So... Anyway, we got a fair amount of Delta V in this tank. We're going to deorbit with it, which is less than half of it. And then once we get into the atmosphere, like at about 30 kilometers up, we're going to burn the rest of it just to slow our descent down, separate, launch the uh, 10 meter heat shield, and coast on down. I believe at this point, yes, all the parachutes are set to deploy at the lowest pressure and the highest altitude possible, which gives us more cushion. Uh, it should be a nice, gentle landing. I was actually surprised during my last, uh, my test, my test, my simulation, yes. I was actually surprised with just how gentle it is. All the physics warp acceleration. Because it, it's, once you, the parent shoots are released, it's, it's super slow, which is great. I mean, I could probably even try ditching this now and just using the heat shield, but I'd rather, um, not. All right, so now we are set straight up retrograde, which is good. We're going to go ahead and time warp up until we get, well, as low as we can. Is that it? Yeah. So I can get rid of you, though. I don't need you. Service info, great. And now we are about to enter the atmosphere. Oh, wrong button. I was looking for the time warp button. M is right next to it, so whoopsie. Because we're going to hit the atmosphere. Yeah, and it, I mean, it's going to auto warp us down anyway. Cool, we're facing retrograde, that's awesome. And yeah, this this is was a pretty good burn. It's actually my third time doing that burn, I think, but we're gonna land really close to the Duna base, which is quite ideal. Plan is to land by the Duna base, drive to it, pick up Honor and Honor, Honor? Honor and Hamish, uh, and drive out to the Anomaly, which I think we just passed over. I think it's somewhere over here. Uh, it'll be a bit of a trek, but we'll get there, find out what it is, and then, um, oh yeah, do we have, we're going to have an Ike eclipse coming up soon, which is neat to see. Um, I think it's not until we actually land, though. We'll check that out in a few minutes once we actually get down there. Oh, yeah, and I remembered now. We want to deploy the parachutes. We want to deploy the parachutes before we separate this, the, the, the 10 meter. So we want to, yeah, we want to get you actually up there. There we go. All right, so we are down inside the atmosphere. Okay, so when we hit about 30, I'm gonna, 30 kilometers, I'm gonna break. Gentle break, about half speed. All right. Yeah, that's the base there. Hopefully we'll land pretty close to it. If I can do things like I did last time, it shouldn't be too hard. We can see that slowly creeping down, just a little bit. We. Every time going back to the planet, it, it kind of freaks out just for a minute or two, or a moment or two. There you go. Anyway, we're going to burn all of this. We're going to use up all of the fuel left in this big orange tank here and slowly reach down. We are, yeah, we are doing fine because we're still facing the sun. Those solar panels are getting power. Awesome. looking trench there. Reminds me of Mars. Hmm, I wonder why. There's the Duna base there. So about 200 Delta V. What's this? No, you know, I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm just going to eyeball it and leave it. Yeah, we should get us just around 600, maybe even above it, below it, which will be great because the heat shield will slow us down beautifully. Etc. Etc. It'll all work out quite nicely. We hopefully land like in the vicinity of the Duna base, drive to it, and everything's everything's great. 
We're going to go ahead and kill off the rest of this stuff, though, just to clean it out. And empty. Kill all throttle. And... Uh, and separate. There we go. Good. It crashed there before, so I'm glad it didn't this time. Whoop, nope. Inflate the heat shield. That'll help slow us down. The parachutes are already ready to go, so we're going to go ahead and stage those. So now, as soon as the atmosphere conditions are right and the altitude is right, there they go. Those will pre-deploy, all six of them. That's beautiful. And brakes, brakes, brakes. Slowing down nicely. Yeah, this is going to be great. Yeah, this is very familiar. We were about this altitude as well. That's the orange can over there. It's going to blow up in a few minutes. And there's that. Awesome. All right, so let's physics warp just a bit. Let's kill the RCS. Okay, whoop, there goes that. So that slows us down quite a lot. We're going to wait until we get slowed down uh, as much as possible. Oh, nice, this is even closer than the last time. Uh, we're going to wait until we slow down as much as possible. We get about as vertical as possible. That's about familiar. Yeah, we slow down to about 17, and we're going to drop the heat shield didn't do much but I think he helped slow us slow us slow us down that's mainly what it was for to help slow things down that's gonna drop goodbye and then we're just gonna go ahead and activate those engines there's not much fuel I short loaded it because I knew we wouldn't need much we end up landing with plenty I can even take off again because our thrust weight's pretty high uh, we still got a few kilometers to go so let's physics warp Oh yeah, and if we were to uh, turn SAS off, it wants to nose down. So we don't. We keep it retrograde. That way we stay nice and steady. Oh, right. Physics warp. Down to the surface. Yeah, again, this is my like fourth attempt doing this. I've had some issues with game crashing and me messing up. So this is going to be the last one. I'm going to keep it good, clean, successful, and whatnot. Um, so I think for this episode, we're already at s not even seven minutes. Maybe eight minutes. We'll drive over there, pick up the people, and drive off. Um, and we'll probably put in a cut, and I'll meet you guys over at the anomaly that's over there. She'll be in the sunlight by then. So that's good. Yeah, this is nice and close. That's beautiful. I always thought it was going to be like a real trek to get here, and then a trek over there. I'm glad this worked out the way it did. All right, so we're closing in on a kilometer in altitude. Out of curiosity. Ooh, oh, stop it, stop it, stop Out of curiosity, if I just go H, 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 and H, H, H. Nope, there's no RCS for that direction, huh? Guess not. Okay. Either way, RCS off. But I know... Puff, puff, puff. Yeah, this will slow us down to whatever speed I want. I think when I did this last time before I crashed it, I think I touched down at under a meter per second. But it was kind of kind of sweet. We're going to go ahead and lock the brakes, though. Just so we don't roll around too much. Tap, tap, shift. I think I ended up at like one-third throttle last time, and it was plenty. That's 300 meters. Closing in on 200 meters. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is this is a rather smooth, easy landing. Oh, oh, it's dark. Are we in the eclipse? We're probably. I think we're in the eclipse shadow. Oh, get down to the ground already, so I can see this because it's cool looking. Wait, I mean, don't slow down. Don't slow down. Don't, don't. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Ooh, our power is draining quickly, though. I think that's because we are uh, eclipsed by Ike. Yeah, blocked by Ike, because we are literally in the shadow of the eclipse. All right, 50 meters, though. We'll yeah, we'll get down just fine, and we'll turn stuff off, and we'll wait for the sunlight. A little more cushion, a little more cushion, a little more cushion. We should be just fine. And we are down, and quick save.
That was my mistake last time. All right, we have good thrust weight. We could take off with this, but it's kind of hard to fly it around, so we're not going to. Um, right. So now, yeah. Oh, isn't that cool looking? Uh, F two, F one. Screenshot, 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 screenshot. That's pretty cool looking. That's cool. I I think because. Duna's relative size between Duna and Ike is so close. Ike is pretty big compared to Duna, so you don't usually see uh, uh, what's it called that are that big. All right, so we're gonna chill here for just a moment until the Ike uh, eclipse is done. Um, where is the sun? Anyway, we're gonna wait here for just a minute until the eclipse is done, and then we'll start moving toward. Ooh, oh, oh, there we go. Okay, so where is it? Can you see it? Are we blocked by Ike? I can't look up enough. Here, let's see if I can do it this way. No, we're still blocked by Ike. Gee, that's a long time. We're just going to keep that there until... We're not blocked by Ike anymore. There we go. Okay, so we're in direct sunlight, so it says... That means that we should be able to find the sun somewhere. It's like straight up. We'll cheat and clip through. Huh. I guess so. Interesting. Anywho, we're back in sunlight now. Power is climbing. Even though their exposure isn't great. Sun's over there somewhere, I guess. Oh! <laughs> We're behind a hill. Sun was over there! I missed it the whole time. It was not where I was looking. Oh, well. Anyway, we're climbing back up to full power. So we're going to drive over to the Duna base and load up the peoples. See you there in just a moment. Alright, we've arrived at the Duna base. Uh, power consumption for this guy is pretty high. It's a bit bigger, beefier, and whatnot than the Moho Rover was. And, of course, we are also further away from the sun, so the solar panels are effectively less effective. Um, plus, the sun's at an angle, too, so our exposure isn't great. Uh, either way, we are now going to have uh, a couple of Kerbals hop in the Rover and head out. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take care of that off-camera for a second. See you in a second when we roll out. All right, we've gotten Honor and Hamish off of the Duna base. And I'm sorry, I can't help but chuckle at the little shimmy, 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 shimmy. The shimmy that they both do. I don't know whether it's the, the Duna atmosphere, whee, or, uh, or lower gravity or what. But it's just funny to see them shake, 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 shake your booty. All right. Uh, and I realized once I got the rover here, I neglected to install a ladder. But that's okay. On Duna, you can RCS. It's not much, but it's enough to get up on top of a vehicle. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> again, that little shimmy is quite, quite entertaining. Uh, <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Just get you on top. There we go. So that grab. Just a little bit. And they're there. They're just like weirdly ghosted. Board. Cool. All right. So we got her in there. Nope. Ah, aim it. Hamish. Let's get you up on there as well. It should have a crew capacity of two. That's what I think it said. Oh, although Amish, Hamish, you are a uh, engineer, I believe. So I'm curious. I've never actually done this before, but I, I, I believe it's a thing. Yeah! That's cool. That's awesome. Okay, good. I'm going to have Hamish uh, repack all the chutes just because it's fun and the ship looks better without all these exposed hatches like that. Um, and then we'll take off for uh, the first anomaly. I think that'll be the conclusion for this episode, though, is that first anomaly and be in there. Unfortunately, 
I realized that I, I think I forgot to pack um, a BTDT, been there, done that um, scanner. What is, oh, I can't look at it because we're not in the vessel. vessel. Um, anyway, I forgot to pack a been there, done that. So it's not going to let me uh, like fully, fully scan the, uh, the uh, anomaly, but still will be able to get to it and plant a flag and look at it and take surface samples and all those things and uh, go from there. Burp, 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 grab and board. Awesome. All right. So, yeah, we don't have that much. We have power, but it drains kind of quickly. What is this? First crew transfer near Duna. Near Duna? On Duna. Okay, interesting. But that got us monies. Wonderful. Um, lights. 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 Not that we really need it. Um, and I only, I should have put a little more battery power on this guy. There's only the one. I should have put a double one up front. Again, live and learn. Minor errors. It's okay. Oh yeah, I was going to have him pack the other ones. Nah, those are okay. But I like having the, the rounded nose on front. It just, it just, it just, it's aesthetically appeasing. Um, anywho. So we're here. We're trying to go over there. So, yeah, this will take a while for me off camera here. I'll see you guys in a bit once we are at the... Uh, anomaly. See you in a minute. Alright, so we have arrived at the anomaly we were going for. Uh, eventually. It took a while, actually. Uh, it took about two hours of drive time to get here. And I actually recorded this once already, about two days ago. But... I'm not really sure what happened. A video cut off. I think I had too much video and I ran out of hard drive space on that hard drive. So I've cleaned things up a bit. Hopefully they'll be more strange now. Oopsie. Um, but yeah. So we got Haunt Honor outside of the Duna Rover here. And we've actually got a flag already planted by Hamish. Um, we're going to fly Honor up to the anomaly though. There we go. Yeah. RCS isn't great on Duna, but it does work. We do burn through it fairly quickly, though. So it's going to be this big rock formation here. I actually already had Honor on here once. This type of thing should look a little familiar. That's right. It's a Kerbin. Aw. The fly got knocked down. Or else it's floating. I mean, she's kind of... Yeah, there's a draw error here because of things, but uh, yeah. Let's see. Can she plant another one? I don't think so. I don't know if that flag is going to survive. It looks like it's loose and floating. Yeah, plant flag. Anywho, yeah, the anomaly here is a Kerbin face. I've heard about this one. I've read about it before. Uh, oh, oh. Giant curb bull Base. Okay. All right. So that flag is mounted, but again, she's like floating above. It's a it's a graphical draw error of some sort. Oh well. Um, yeah. We've already taken a separate sample actually, and an EVA report from this area. Those are already stored on the ship. Actually, I think I've already transmitted trans transmitted transmitted those back to Kerbin as well. And over there is the lander, 80, almost 87 kilometers away. So at this point, I'll have her hop back in the rover. We're going to science this area just to process as much as we can here. That'll be it for this episode. And then, to, not tomorrow, but next episodes, well, the, um, big map. The other anomalies are down there. Is way, way over there. And then the last one is like down here, I think. Yeah, something like that. That's close enough. Oh, way over there on the opposite side of the planet. So they're mer and mer. Um, this took so long to drive so far. Uh, it wasn't like, what's it called, the Moho mission. That was pretty straightforward. Uh, this do not this well this planet yeah duna is a bit more rugged uh, and a little less forgiving like i think thank goodness for quick saves 
Uh, but I think I'm going to launch the Duna base because it's it's got lots of fuel and Delta V in it right now. It's also a mining ship. Oh, while well, I was here, I was curious. No, I don't want that. No, I can't get the... Let's see, can I focus on... I want to focus on Duna. Duna? No. Well, anyway, um, I want to see the, whoa, I want to see the, uh, the ooh, RCS. I want to see the, I'm pretty sure I've scanned this planet for resources. I, I'm pretty sure. I honestly can't even remember. Get you back on the ship, or on the rover, I should say. There we go. Grab and board. There we go. Okay. So now that we have a whoa, oh, I hit B again for board. What I meant, it, and it unlocked the brakes. Stop. All right, so now can I focus on Duna? No, I still got the rover and the information. Interesting. Anywho, uh, perhaps, oh, I can do it from the, from the, what's it called? From the space center. Let's try that real quick. But before we jump, quick save. Back to the space center real quick, back on Kerbin. And we shall look at the, uh, the info for Duna, because we've like we've got the uh, the Duna base landed there. He's got resourcing capabilities. He's got lots of it. It's fine, uh, but I want to be able to see if there's other possibilities for Duna. All right, let's see. scrolling. There you go. Uh, let's see. Whoa. That's glitchy. Oh, I didn't. I guess I didn't. Let's see. We have scan set, do now. I can't remember. We'll, we'll fly it and see. I know I sent a scan set to do, you know, the scan set things, but I don't remember if I sent. I don't think I did. I probably didn't. I probably didn't have the technology when I sent these to do a survey scan. Oh, wow. Looks like a what this looks like <laughs> it looks like a y-wing fighter almost so yeah we've got uh scan sat tech but no actual um no resource stuff on the surface okay so in that case then the only option is going to be to actually just take over the duna base we'll and switch back to him too and start resourcing Oh, well, we could do that right now, too, just to, to see how it goes, how it's paced. The rate of... Whoa. It always does that. Whenever we land somewhere and the parachutes are, are, are popped, it, it does that. It's kind of weird. Um, so, I don't remember. Did I... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero... Oh, I locked. Seven was for the for the brakes. That's that's great, but not terribly helpful. All right, so I have to go around and extend all these guys manually. So extend all the radiators and deploy the drills. moving. Oh, there we go. Uh, so let's see. Core temp and active. Core rate per second. So point 
0.03 whatever per second. All right, well, we'll start harvesting here. And as the thermal efficiency kicks up, we'll be doing better. Uh, our electrical charge is still good. We're charging even as we as we utilize those things. Um, and then, what is, oh, I saw this solar panel just like that, and it looked like a glitch for a second. I was like, no. Um, so then we got ore, and it's slowly, yeah, it's slowly adding some ore. That's great. Uh, and we'll wait and engage a what's it called once we have collected some ore. Anywho, in the meantime, like I said, I'm going to do science here at this location, because I'm sure this is a biome. This is obviously its own biome. And then where the anomaly is, where Honor and Hamish are, we'll do some sciencing there. Uh, yeah, that's it for this episode. Uh, thanks for hanging out. If you like, hit like, hit subscribe, tell your friends, tell your neighbors, pass the word. And I will catch you later.